Are you one of the many organizations that's not currently able to decrypt TLS traffic and worried that you might have malware infections on your network that you can't find? Well, if so, today's episode is for you because we are going to look at TLS traffic, both version 1.2 and 1.3, talk about what the differences between those two protocol versions are and what they mean to you as a blue team member, and also show you that you can still catch viruses even if their traffic is encrypted and you are not decrypting that traffic. So stick around for this episode of the 12 Days of Defense. Okay, so to start off, I wanna show the details that you can see in a PCAP file that is not being decrypted. So what I have here is a PCAP uh, that is just safe.pcap, it is me going to a whole bunch of different websites. So Best Buy, Wired, uh, Weather, Amazon, Wall Street Journal, NASA, and I recorded all of that traffic. And what I can do is I can run it through Zeek. And if you're not familiar with Zeek, check out the second day of this mini series and you'll see how it works. Basically we put a PCAP in, we get a bunch of log files out. One of those log files is the SSL log. And the SSL log, what we can do is we can look at all of the server name fields and the subject fields. The server name field is the SNI field, the server name indication field, which is telling us what domain someone is connecting to. It's part of the TLS spec. And there's also the subject field. And the subject field tells us the details about what is being connected to, the organization's name, the location, and the country, and things like that. So let's look at that. What we have on the left side here is the server name, and you'll notice that all of them are filled in. And then on the right side, we have a mix of some things that are filled in and some things that are not filled in. We have Rubicon Project, Tech Ops, Los Angeles, California, US, and then we have some that we just can't see at all. What's the difference between the times that we can see the TLS certificate subject field details and the times that we can't? The difference is the spec of TLS that's being used. TLS version 1.2 and everything before allows you to see in clear text detail, not decrypting, the certificate subject details. The whole certificate is passed in plain text. In TLS 1.3, the certificate details are encrypted, which means they are disappearing. But you can still see the SNI field with one caveat that we'll be covering on the next video. What can we do to see the difference here and further highlight this? If we run the same command, version, server name, and subject, and then we do the sort unique sort, what we're gonna do is just get one line for every unique entry, also including the TLS version this time. So when we look at that, you'll see, here we go, TLS 1.3. All of these sites supported a TLS version 1.3 connection, and we don't have any certificate details there. If we scroll up further, when we get to the TLS 1.2s, you'll notice all of the TLS 1.2s and before do have certificate details where we can see the common name and we can see Fastly, San Francisco, California, US. This brings me to one of the main important demonstrations I wanna do in this video. If you have malware that is using TLS, often what malware authors will not do is fill in certificate details. So what you can do is you can actually look for the absence or anomalies within the certificate details field to find malware, even in a PCAP that just has fully encrypted command and control in it. Let's take a look at that. I have a virus PCAP in a different folder here. In this one, if we run the same commands here, Let's look at the server name and the subject again, and we'll do a sort unique sort on this. In here, a bunch of domains, some are good, but somewhere in here is command and control. Well, it's a little bit hard to tell just looking at the domain names like this with the other stuff offset. So let's only look at the subjects. Do you see anything here that might be suspicious? I'll pause the video here for a couple seconds if you want to take a look at it yourself before I give you the answer. All right, were you able to find it? This line right here is a certificate that seems to have no details at all. Where we normally would have a domain name, we have a blank. Where we would normally have an organization and a location and a state and a country, absolutely gone. Everything else here is filled out, right? 
And so what in the heck is going on with that one? That one's a clear anomaly. You may have locked onto this one as well. Those are probably just Unicode characters being expressed like this. So mail.ru is actually a legitimate website. It's a Russian webmail service. So let's see if we can figure out what domain name this was associated with. Let's go back to our first list here and see if we can find that, right? On the right side, we're looking for that lack of detail. And there it is right there, amajitechnologies.world. Hmm, could that be our command and control domain? Let's copy this and then let's grep for it in all of the other log files and see where else it shows up. Here we have a whole bunch of entries in ssl.log. It shows us that this is the IP address and that it was going to destination port 8888. Would that be the clue that this could be command and control? Not necessarily, right? Sometimes things are run on non-standard ports. It is anomalous, but it doesn't guarantee it's evil or anything like that. In this case, it's looking like it might be the actual backdoor because we don't really have anything else that has this suspicious lack of details. Amajai Technologies .world, .world domains aren't really used very often. So let's take a look at the answer and see if we can figure out if we were right. So where I got this was malware traffic analysis and looking for a sample for this video, which I filmed on December 13th, I just went to this item right here, 1207 Quackbot infection with cobalt strike beacon and spam bot activity. And look at that. We found it. Amajai Technologies .world. It wasn't just any backdoor. It was actually a cobalt strike beacon, which is known to be very, very sneaky. Now I'm sure that they could have potentially set it up better, but in this case, this is a real piece of malware and they really did not set it up in a way that was sneaky. We were able to find it. Now there were probably other ways we could have found this malware. The port was potentially suspicious. It might've been on a threat intel list, but we just found it without decrypting traffic, purely looking at certificate details. And that is awesome, right? So I wanted to show you that this is something that is possible to do. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, John, you just told me TLS 1.3 is gonna take away the certificate details. What am I supposed to do with that then? Well, there's still other things you can do. You have the SNI field, which tells you someone went to amajitechnologies.world. Hmm, what can we do with that? Well, think about it. If we take in our logs that tell us what domains people are going to, and we have that information still, which we do in most cases, but pay attention till tomorrow's video. We can do various enrichment techniques with these domains. So let's say we take in this log, we parse out the domain name, we tell the SIM when you get a domain name, do some additional enrichments. Check out, is this a brand new domain that was just created a couple weeks ago? Maybe the TLD is suspicious, in this case it was, .world. You could just say, someone went to a .world TLD. Is that something that you would expect? And in a lot of cases, no one's going to those TLDs, so it might draw your attention. Is it a domain that no one's ever gone to in your company before? Is it a random domain? Is it a really long domain? Is it a unranked domain? Is it a domain that has a bad reputation? There's still a lot of chances for you to catch malware, even if it's encrypted, just knowing the domain name. So this is something that's totally possible to do. And I wanted to make sure everyone knew that this was a possibility, even if you're not doing TLS decryption. So there you go catching malware with TLS encryption without doing any kind of decryption of the traffic at all. So there you have it, another day of the 12 days of defense. And like I said, TLS 1.3 is starting to hide some information from us. DOH is starting to hide some information from us, but at least we have the SNI, right? Right? Well, tune in tomorrow. We'll see about that one. For now, the answer is yes, but definitely watch that video to see where this is going probably in the longer term. If you got some value out of this video, please like and subscribe, tell a friend, help me get the word out. Uh, I'm going to be making more videos like this going into the future, so you don't wanna miss out on tips and tricks like this if you enjoyed what you saw here. Don't forget I have the additional free resources down in the description. Check out the security operations guide with a bunch of tips and tricks and mental models for your SOC. Check out the Blueprint podcast. We're gonna be coming out with a new episode of that. Uh, in the beginning of next year, and I will see you on the next episode of the 12 Days of Defense. Thanks for watching.